Okay, so in this video we are going to analyze the motion that you saw in the video BMA Physics 2G. So this is based on BMA Physics 2G. And that is a tennis ball being dropped from a balcony by one of my assistants. Okay, so once again, you set it up exact same way. X, T, V, I, V, F, A. Always start these problems like this. Now, I measured that the distance from the ball drop to the deck was about 4.1 meters. And I measured that the time, you know, using the step by step, uh, I measured on the video that the time was 27 frames. And I know that my camera shoots at 30 frames per second. So if I want to convert that into seconds, I'm going to put one second up on top and I'm going to put 30 frames on the bottom. Frames are going to cancel and so I'm going to end up with my time is going to be 27 divided by 30 is going to be 0.9 seconds. So 0 0.9 seconds. Now, I'm going to need one more piece of information before I can calculate A. Now, I think I have a good idea about what A should be, but we're doing an experiment, and so we're not just uh, using a value out of the book. We're trying to calculate it. So, let's forget about that for a second. Think about which one of these two we can fill in. Hit pause and think about it. Okay, what I want you to guys to understand is that VI, when it left the hand, when the hand released, the ball was starting off going zero meters per second. Okay, so now let's find these two. Uh, let's find VF and then we'll find A. Oh, I should fill that in down there too. Okay, so I want you to go back to your list of equations and find the equation that you would use to solve this. Okay. I, for the, for the moment, do not care about A. So this is the equation that does not care about A. And so I'm going to say X equals VF plus VI over 2 times T. So I'm going to say x is equal to, oh, hang on, that requires that I know vf, and I don't know vf. So we're stuck for a second. Uh, we're going to have to figure out a first. Okay, so that's good. We can't use that because we don't know vf. So we're going to have to start off and we're going to have to calculate A first. So now we need to find the equation that does not contain VF. Well, this one here does not contain VF. So let's use that one. X equals VIT plus one-half AT squared. Okay. Now... I forgot something. I've been forgetting some other things, but this one I forgot deliberately. There's an error with this chart. And there's an error with this chart that's very, very common to people who are starting off this topic. The ball started high and dropped down. So the ball did not go 4.1 meters because that would be a positive distance. That would be starting from the ground and going up. Since it started up and went down, the ball actually traveled negative 4.1 meters. So 
Uh, x is negative because the ball finishes lower than it started. X is negative because the ball finished lower than it started. Okay, now we can plug in some things here. Negative 4.1 meters equals 0 meters per second times 0 0.9 seconds plus 1 half A 0 0.9 seconds squared. Okay, so to get A by itself, why don't you work on that for a second, hit pause and work on that for a second. What I'm going to have to have A by itself is I'm going to have 2 times negative 4.1 meters divided by 0 0.9 seconds squared. Okay, so if I do that on my calculator, it's going to be 2 times negative 4.1 divided by 0.9, and you've got to remember to square it. Always remember to square it. Please remember to square it. And so I get negative 10.1. So A is negative 10.1. Uh, meters per second squared. Now, you'll keep in mind if you go back uh, in the, I think it was 2 AR2, uh, the one before 2G, uh, 2F, BMA Physics 2F, if I bring that back, in that lab, I calculated G to be 9.6 and in this experience I'm calculating it to be negative uh, 10.1 I should go back I should change that that actually should be a negative both of these should be negative uh, that's going to really confuse some people later but they'll have to deal with it so I'm kind of around the official value of negative 9.8 but it's hard with the equipment that I'm using to get right exactly spot on. But we're doing an experiment, and since we're doing an experiment, we're going to stick with the numbers that we measure. Because really, unless you have a very, very good reason to do so, you should go with your experimental numbers rather than just you know, something that somebody told you. Because that's what science is about, is doing experiments and uh, learning things based off of those experiments. So I'm going to say that my measured acceleration is negative 10.1 meters per second squared. Now, uh, we can uh, now calculate uh, VF. I guess we, uh, we could have done that before anyways. I don't know why I got confused. We can now calculate VF. And to calculate VF, we're going to do X equals VF plus VI over 2 times T. Okay, now work on rearranging that for VF. I want you to be really good at manipulating equations. So hit pause and think about manipulating that to get VF. What I get is VF is equal to 2x over t minus VI. And VI is 0, and I'm almost out of time. So I'm going to see my VF is 2 times negative 4.1 meters divided by 0 0.9 seconds. And so I'm going to say my final velocity was 2 times negative 4.1 divided by 0.9. Final velocity was negative 18 meters per second.
and I'm out of time for this video.